My name is Michael Moore. I'm a senior research specialist in the biology department. I have a veterinary degree from Cambridge in England and also a PhD from the Hui MIT joint program. Bright whales are air breathing mammals and they're huge leviathans. Uh, there's nothing quite like them. They're fat, they're ponderous, they're bizarre animals. And, you know, they sort of behave like cows, and yet there is a piece to them that makes one wonder what, what else is going on. Uh, many times I've been in a boat working with a right whale, and I felt that they have communicated very clearly to me what their feelings are. And so there's a, there's a strange piece to our relationship with them that doesn't necessarily fit within our general understanding. Uh, an animal has thrown water at me to say, leave my calf alone. North Atlantic right whales are about 12 feet when they're born, and they grow up to 45, 50 feet, and they can weigh up to 65 tons or thereabouts. There are approximately 350 North Atlantic right whales remaining. Their reproductive success is quite good at the moment, although it could be better. Uh, unfortunately, the mortalities are just about keeping up with the calf rate, so ship, ship strikes and fishing gear entanglements, the two major sort of human-induced problems that we, we are aware of. Over half of the animals that we diagnose when we do forensic necropsies show evidence of, of ship strike, um, whether it be from sharp trauma from propeller cuts or blunt trauma from the barber's bow of a ship which very often you don't really see much on the outside of the animal at all, but once you take them apart, it's very obvious that they were, they were heavily traumatized by ship collisions. In addition to that, uh, many animals are entangled in fishing gear, and a minority of the entanglements persist to be lethal over a period of months. And we do get to see some of those animals on the beach as well, although we suspect that many of the animals that we see chronically entangled in poor condition die offshore and sink because they have time to lose body condition and as a result of that they, they tend to be negatively buoyant so when they die they sink and so we don't get to examine them as often as we do the ship struck animals. We and colleagues from many institutions study these animals by listening to them, observing their movements, putting non-invasive tags with suction cups on their backs examining the thickness of their blubber with an acoustic probe, again in, in live animals, by taking small skin samples and, and analyzing fecal samples, and also by examining samples taken from the mortalities where we've been examining them for the cause of death. Each individual has a unique pattern on its head of roughened skin patches which are highlighted by whale lice. So, Aerial and shipboard photographic surveys of habitats where we expect to find these whales allow us to routinely, every year, collect photographs of these individuals. There is a catalog that's maintained by the New England Aquarium of these individuals, and through the years we've been able to build life histories of individuals for you know, many, many years of calving events uh, and where they're found to be feeding and, and so on, and who they're associated with. So the future of the North Atlantic right whale hangs in the balance. We know enough to say what we have to do. We have to reduce ship strikes and we have to reduce fishing gear entanglement. The question is, do we have the will to do it? And it all really comes down to economics. Is the market today willing to accept the cost of preserving such endangered charismatic species as the North Atlantic right whale? Ultimately, it comes down to legislative priority and pressure upon the state and federal legislator to recognize the unique opportunity our, our generation have to make the difference between success and failure of saving their species versus the, the corporate and the industrial goals of profitable fisheries and profitable shipping industries. Those are the balances we need to strike. And if the politicians understand that people care about biodiversity, then potentially, you know, the right things will happen. This podcast is a production of Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. For more information, visit us on the web at www.whoi.edu.